Today we will look at what is currently available to enable carrier operations in P3D. Firstly, we need to have carriers that can launch and recover aircraft. Secondly, we need aircraft with hooks that can land on carriers. Thirdly, we need to be able to insert carriers into our scenarios. Fourthly, we need help in locating carriers when we are airborne, plus glide path and lineup assistance. Finally, we need the ability to fine tune our aircraft for arrested landings and to receive feedback on the quality of our landing attempts. This list shows the main carriers that are available for P3D. In terms of quality, the best boats are produced by Team SDB, that's the USS Enterprise, and by Simwork Studios, producing USS Coral Sea and USS Midway. The other models are all pretty good and there are more boats available on the main freeware sites. This list shows the most popular aircraft that are available for carrier operations. There are, however, many others, ranging from World War II aircraft right through to the latest F-35B and C variants. For quality, the top models are the F-4B by Simwork Studios and the F-A-18E Superbug by Vertical Reality Simulations. There are several ways that you can place carriers within your simulator environment. The main carrier packages include traffic files that automatically generate fleet movements at specific locations. The package documents detail where the fleets are placed. The other main placement function is via the add-ons menu in the simulator. The three main placement packages are AI Carriers by Lamont Clark, the SWS Utility that is included in the F4B or the Midway packages, and thirdly the Utility that is included in the VRS TAC Pack. When these three packages are loaded into the sim, the add-ons menu will include the indicated options. The carrier location can be determined by using the request position option from the add-ons menu in the sim. They can also be determined by using the RFN Carrier Gauge, which is a freeware download from the Royal French Navy website, which is shown in the show notes below. 
The gauge is moderately complex to install and set up, but there are several how-to videos on YouTube to help you do this. There are also many forum discussions on the topic, so a Google search is worthwhile. You have to tune the gauge radio to the carrier TACAM frequency. The gauge will then lock on to the carrier and the VOR needle will point towards the carrier. When you click on the ILS button, the needles will show you the glide slope and line up information. If you have uh, LLS active, that's long range line up system, then red and green lights on the carrier will show if you are too far left, that's red, or too far right, that's green. Amber would mean that you are on the center line. the ball. Assuming you are on glide slope and center line, the AOA indexer will tell you if you are too fast, that would be a red up arrow telling you to raise your nose, or if you're too slow, that would be a green down arrow telling you to lower your nose. On the approach, your throttle will not control speed, it will control the rate of descent. And the trick is to try and keep your angle of attack constant so that your hook will capture the wire. The deck mounted instrument is the meat ball, which will tell you if you are high or low when close into the carrier. The final landing guidance comes from the LSO, that's Landing Signals Officer, in the last half mile to touchdown. He will advise if you are drifting left or right, if you are going high or low, and tell you to increase or decrease power. If your approach is unsafe, he will order a wave off, which means you increase power and go around again. Trap, one wire, trap, one wire. The complexity of carrier landings means that one aircraft configuration cannot fit all aircraft. Tools are therefore available to fine tune an aircraft's tail hook parameters, catapult attachment, launch and recovery speeds and weights, etc. The angle of attack indexer can also be calibrated for each aircraft.
Let us now step through the process. Firstly, the aircraft has to be under a certain weight to land on a carrier. So it's a good idea to reduce the amount of fuel before you do your carrier approach. I usually make my fuel 50%. When I go to the add-ons menu, go to the uh, AI ships option and choose the carrier that we want and position it so many miles ahead. I usually go for 10 miles. We then go into that menu again and tell the carrier to go forward. In other words, we want it moving. So there's wind over the deck. And then finally we check the position just to make sure that it is 10 miles ahead. Sometimes they can be 40,000 miles away due to a glitch. So best check before you take off. Then we bring up the RF uh, and carrier gauge. So it's usually shift four, shift five, something like that, to bring the gauge up. Turn both sections on, the upper section and the lower section, the radio, and then tune to the carrier frequency. And there are documents um, available to give you the various carrier frequencies. You put it in, make it active, and uh, confirm that the carrier is locked on. The magenta pointer will then point towards the carrier and give you a range. We take off and we can see that the long range uh, indicator is active. And you can see a flashing, in this case, red light telling us that we're too far to the left. We switch to the ILS mode. The needles come up telling us we're currently too low and we're too far to the left. So we need to turn right and climb. As we start to get the needles intersecting, then we can turn into the final course. And go dirty. Hook down, flaps down, gear down. We're now looking at the indexer, we're looking at our flight Don't path, sink. and we're Don't looking sink. at the meatball. Don't sink. Don't sink. And we react to the LSO directions. Wave off. Wave off. We should now wave Don't off. Sink. Don't sink. Trap. One wire. But we decide we can make it. Bad, really. We should have gone round. So that's how it works. Here we're just letting you see that um, the gauge will work with World War II aircraft and World War II carriers. That's the victorious HMS Victorious steaming along and the Just Flight F4U Corsair making a landing attempt. The assessment of your landing attempts can be logged through the virtual LSO program uh, from the SWS package. So you can see how useful those needles are to get you in the right position. Good trap. Two, good trap, two wire. So I hope you liked all that. The uh, various URLs are in the uh, show notes below. 
So see you next time.